Hi everyone, this is Sherry. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Step Up. My sponsor for this episode is Event Espresso, a very cool event management tool that will do wonders for your WordPress site. There's a free version and a premium version. Check out the free demo, look it over, and see how it can help you to manage your next event. Event Espresso at eventespresso.com. Hi everyone, this is Sherry. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Step Up with my guest this week, Mirna Bard. Please visit Mirna's website, which is www.mirnabard.com. Mirna today is going to discuss some SEO with us and the importance of SEO, especially when you are trying to get your social media hopping along. SEO is um, basically the foundation that you need to drive traffic back to your website. So let's hear what Mirna has to say about SEO. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me on this episode of Step Up, my guest today. I am so excited because I love her, Mirna Bard. Mirna Hi. is like, <laughs> Mirna is like this excellent, you know what? A lot of people hate the word guru in social media, but the woman's got it all. She She's just got it all, and she's got it going on, and she's got a wonderful site, mirnabard.com. She's got a great Facebook fan page, um, and I would love to talk to her about social media and her tips and tricks, but in this episode, so we're going to bring her back, but in this episode, we're going to talk about specifically SEO, because Mirna knows a heck of a lot about SEO, and a lot of us don't. So, <laughs> Mirna, my understanding is that SEO is like... It's like a three-legged stool. You have great content, you have keywords, and you have links. Are those the pillars? Are those the things that we really need to focus on as small business owners trying to get our sites noticed? Search engine optimization is the single most important thing you can do online. Um, you know, everybody, I know social media is the big hype. It's the hottest thing out there. But without search engine optimization, your, your website will not be found on the search engines. And a lot of people online right now, especially because they're very web savvy, they're sophisticated, they know how to go out and search for products and services, they're going to the search engines to do that. So right. you really, if you have, I don't care what industry you're in, if you have a website, you must optimize it for the search engines. Okay. So I've heard people say content is king, but I've heard other SEO people say, no, links are king. But to get those links, you need great content. So let's talk about each of those separately. And where would you like to start? Content, links, or keywords? Well, first of all, links are actually votes for your site. So the search engines, when they scan through your site, when they send their bots or their spiders, there's, you know, we call them robots or spiders because your, your websites are not manually scanned. Mm -hmm. They actually look for links and they look with, um, for keywords within those links, which is called anchor text. And that's really the single most important thing because the more links that you have coming back into your website, the more popular it is, the more the search engines love you. Now, without these links, without content, you're obviously not going to have the links. Right. So the most important thing is to first get going on your content and ask yourself, you know, what are what's going to attract my audience? What is the most important contact content that I can put out there that's going to attract my audience to share the content, to link to the content, so it goes viral. When it goes viral, then it becomes popular with the search engines because the more content you have, the more updated it is, the more fresh it is, the more links you're going to get back into your site. And that's, you know, and that's, it, it's almost a guarantee. Great content equals great links. Okay, and how often are you updating or adding content to your own site? Um, I try to do it twice a week as, at a minimum. I recommend when people first start and they want to make their site pretty popular at least three to four times a week to get, you know, at least. That's a lot. Yeah, I <laughs> week it does not have to be lengthy it could be you know 200 words or something as long as it's keyword rich and you know these are the keywords that you want to target you're fine you know it doesn't have to be this 800 word article on your website okay so, so before we talk about keywords um you said make sure that you're pro providing information that your prospects want mm -hmm. some SEO people I've heard will say, you must know exactly who this prospect persona is. Do you know exactly who yours is or how did you start? How, for the people that are listening that are brand new to this and are like, 
I don't know who my prospects are yet. How can they target them better or find them? I'll, I'll be honest with you. When I first started my business, that was the hardest thing for me to identify. And I think over time, you know, working with different clients and really knowing the ones that I enjoy to work with, mm -hmm. the ones that, you know, put a smile on my face, the ones that I know that I could give results, the ones that weren't nagging all the time. <laughs> you know, those are the ones, those are the ones I wanted to work with because they're the ones that were committed. They were consistent. Um, they knew that they had to, they had to make it happen. So I kind of noted that along the way and I made sure. So it's not really about demographics mm -hmm. of the audience. It's more about the type of personality that you want to work with. Um, the people who are committed, they're dedicated, they'll do anything that it takes to be successful online. And that's what I wanted as a customer. I did not want everybody and anybody because I knew that I would lose my business that way. I made sure that no matter what demographics you're in, no matter what industry you're in, I want to make sure that you're committed to me as much as I'm committed to you. And that's how I just started to you know, know exactly what kind of audience I wanted. But how did you target your content then? Um, I targeted my content based on, you know, what is the interest out there as far as um, as far as the keywords. So I, I did a keyword research and I wanted to see what people were searching for in the search engines. So as far as social media, okay, what kinds of keywords did they put in the search engines to search for social media? What were they looking for? Were they looking for social media help? Were they looking for social networking assistance? So with the popularity of the keywords, I based my content off of that and that's how my traffic started coming into my website because I knew that once you know once people were searching for those words those they meant to that those were the popular ones that you know that I needed to have on my website okay and on your most excellent blog the other day you um, had a guest blog or who talked about um, RSS links as a way to build those incoming links um, did you spend a lot of time, I guess I really want you to, to like give like three basic tips to the newbie who's watching this going, somebody please help me, just help me get there faster. Is RSS, um, I think there were directories that you, were, you had a list of like 12 and said put your site here. Right. Is that something that you would make a high priority or um, let's start there and then we'll jump to easing directories because there's pros okay. and cons to that. Um, RSS is great because once you submit it to directories, literally it, go, it will go viral. You will see a lot of traffic from these RSS directories um, because this is where, you know, it's almost like, you know, syndicated content that people are looking for and the more RSS feeds that you're in, of course, the more popular your site is going to become. But you, when you're looking for links, you should have a variety of links. Um, you should be getting, so you shouldn't just focus on just RSS. You should be focusing on forums, on blo other blogs, um, on articles, on press releases, on videos. You should be getting links from all over the internet and it should be from websites that are relevant to your website. So if I'm a social media person, I'm not going to go to maybe, I don't know, like an automobile site and say, can I get a link on, you know, I want it to be very relevant. So I'm going to go to all the business websites. I'm going to go to all the, maybe some other social media websites that don't compete with me. They just complement my services. Mm -hmm. um, so you really want to disperse that and, and be very, very um, diverse in, in the selection of your links. Okay. And that's okay. very important because you don't want it just from one source. You want it from multi multiple sources. Okay. And there are people who run um, uh, article directories, and they are constantly saying, this is the way to get noticed. This is the way to get noticed. You should have all of your articles on my site. And yet I've heard SEO people say, don't do that because the more duplicate content you have out there, even if you're just tweaking 10% of it or changing the title, they're like, you could be killing your SEO. And now, so people are like, so tell us, Mirna, what to do. Yeah, syndicated content can actually hurt you more than help you. So you have to be very careful when you are um, submitting to article directories. 
And there is a process called article spinning. So it can be the content, the content can be the same, but it's actually spun so that way your title is different, the content is maybe written a little bit different. Um, there's a different spin to the article each time you submit it. So it's not the same article. Because what happens when somebody goes into the search engines and they're entering in a keyword, it's actually, they will look for the most, you know, the most relevant article to bring up or the most relevant post. And if they're all the same, they're going to choose, they may choose one that you don't want to choose. So if you have it on your website and you have it on, a, on another directory, you want them to choose your website and you don't have control over that. And that's why you have to really be careful with duplicate content. Not that you're going to be penalized or, you know, Google is going to take you off their robots. But you, you just have to be very cautious and make sure that people are not stealing your content and, and posting it on their sites as well. So how much of your time do you spend going out there making sure people aren't stealing your stuff? Um, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of time because there are actual plugins that you can search for. They're, they're called copyright plugins. So what happens is if somebody copies, you know, a good length of your article somewhere, you will know about it um, and you will see, you know, or what you can do and what's e even an easier process is if you go to maybe just a Google Alerts mm -hmm. and put in the exact title of your article okay. in quotes, just make sure, or like an exact, maybe a sentence of your article in quotes, Google will find that for you and they'll let you know that that person submitted it onto your site. So there's all, especially with blogging platforms, WordPress is very easy so that way you know who's actually, you know, tagging you or you know who's, um, you know, pinging, pinging your articles and it's, it's very easy for you to find that out now just by monitoring what goes on online. Okay. So there's different tools for that. And for the person who might have been listening earlier when you said there are ways to spin the article, do you want to tell them a little bit more about that, you know, so they understand more concretely what you mean? Um, there are actually people that have this as a service. They'll provide that for you as a service, and a lot of search engine optimizers will have that as a service. So you can, you know, of course, that will be part of your search engine optimization if someone is doing it for you. Or there are tools out there that do it as well. Or you can do it manually. So it's it's really up to the person on what they feel comfortable with. I would do um, maybe some research on a lot of the tools out there. I don't personally do it myself because I have an assistant who does, you know, all my article submissions and everything else. And he actually does everything manually because I, I particularly like that more than some of the tools that are out there. Is he available? <laughs> I, yeah, I take up all his time. He works for me 40 hours. Oh, does he really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. See, I, I know you have these secrets for why you're doing so well. And that's one of them right there. People listen up. Outsource. Outsource. All right, so we've talked a little bit about links, we've talked a little bit about keywords, and we have talked a little bit about content, and obviously there's so much more that we can go into in depth. Is there anything else you would like to talk about in depth in any of those before we go on to Meredith's favorite tips and tools? Yeah, one thing about keywords, when you're choosing keywords, you want to make sure that they're high in search volume, high in relevancy, and then low in competition. And what I mean by that is, you know, you want to make sure they can get you enough traffic to your site. You want to make sure they're relevant to your industry. You don't want to pick a popular keyword just because you want traffic and it has nothing to do with your business. Mm -hmm. And then you want it to be low competition. And what I mean by that is, you know, Google will tell you how competitive the keyword is. And you can also use keyword tools. Like I love Keyword Tracker. I, I don't think I can live without Keyword Tracker. It really is my favorite tool. It is a paid tool. It's only about 50 something dollars a month. It's very affordable. You don't have to, you can only, you know, maybe sign up for one month, do your keyword research, and then you can drop it or you can continue on a month to month basis. But you want to make sure that these keywords are not too high in competition because if they are, it's going to be very hard for you to rank on page one of the search engines and your goal should be page one always. Um, People don't tend to go beyond page two if they go to page two. So you want to make sure um, for your industry, for your products and services, is you want to aim for the top 10 search results for that specific keyword. So it's, if it's very competitive, 
you really don't have, um, you know, it, it, it may take you at least a year or two to get up there with a lot of hard work. So I would pick ones that are low competition um, and still can get you the traffic and, and be very cautious of that because, and the more targeted the keywords are, the, more, the higher the conversions on your website. So if someone is, let's say, you know, maybe targeting the word shoes, you don't want to go after that work. It's <laughs> Competitive, way too competitive. So you may want to pick a, a name, like a brand name, plus shoes, plus maybe a color, plus maybe a size. Narrow it down to as much as you can, and we call those long tail keywords. Now, the search volume might be lower than the word shoes. However, you're going to get the people who are serious about buying that product because they're looking for that specific product and they will convert a lot higher. So you won't be getting the looky lose on your site. You'll be looking for like serious shoppers that, that will buy. So okay. that's a huge tip right there. Yeah, that is a huge tip. Very big yeah. tip. Because uh, I think uh, someone was like, they told me they use the keyword marketing. I'm like, Oh gosh! There's like 20 million hits or something on marketing alone. It's like, how's that working for you? (laughs) I mean, that's like me. I would not target the word social media. Eventually, I will as my website gets more and more popular. But I went for more of the lower competition, and they're still getting me good results. So, you know, social media consultant, social media speaker, and I'm on page one for those keywords. But the word social media, I mean, impossible. I would not be able to rank high at all because I'm competing with all these large, you know, news sites and, you know, it it would be really impossible. It's, you know, over the years, yeah, I can get there, but not at at this point. So how long did it take you to get on page one for for social media consultant? Um, For social media consultant, it probably took me a good uh, few months. Yeah. It took me a good few months to start, because by the time you, if even if you start building the links, by the time the search engines find those links, it can take a good few months. So if you're just starting out with your um, search engine optimization, I would give it you know, a good three to six months for the low competitive keywords, and you will start seeing results if you're very consistent from day to day. Okay. So um, your analytics, what tools are you using to track that? And I'm sure you're using more than one. <laughs> Yes, I am. I use a lot of tools. Um, Well, Google Analytics is a must, and I tell this to everybody because first, it's free, and second, it's easy to use. Mm -hmm. And third, they provide training. So if you're stuck, if you don't know how to read it, if you don't know how to, you know, put it on your site, Google actually has videos. They even have in different locations, they have classes. Um, and it's, it's, they make it easy for you. And, and that's really why, you know, entrepreneurs should, that's a must for them. Now, if you have a WordPress site, there's something called WP Stats. It's a plugin that you can put. Um, the only thing about this plugin is it takes up too much space in the database. So it might slow up your site a little bit, but that's actually another good free tool to use. Um, and I would probably, you know, If you do have a little bit of budget, I would spend something on maybe like a web trends. Um, I like web trends a lot. If you're trying to monitor your listening and your social media, that's great because it's a combination of both. So that way you don't have to spend money on different tools. So there are literally hundreds of tools out there. And you can't go, I mean, I think you'd have to test different ones and do your research before you say, okay, this will work for my business. And I think this is what I want to use. It's hard for me to tell somebody unless I know their specific goals and and what they want to do to recommend that specific tool for their business. Right. And I will say that I did try that WP stats and it just, my website just went like, like it was, you know, yeah, like 87 years old. You know, I love it, but some websites, it it really depends on your server and, you know, how it's hosted. And Mm -hmm. for some websites, it works great. For some websites, it doesn't. So you you really need to be careful. And there are different tools. You know, it's really important to not only track the, the website visitors, Um, But also track, you know, there are tools out there that track the clicks on your site. So how are people, it's it's more about usage. How are people using your site? 
You know, where are they clicking? What are they not clicking on? You know, so that way you monitor, okay, maybe these pages are not working. Maybe we need to redesign some pages just to kind of see, you know, um, if, if it converts better. Because the way you lay things out on your website makes such a huge difference in conversions as well. And that's something that, you know, a lot of people really need to pay attention to, especially if you're selling products online. Right. And I think one of the tools is called eTracker. So, you know, take a look at that. I, I think that might work for a lot of people. Okay. I noticed, I can't remember the name of it, but I did notice that there was a service that actually does like a, a thermal, like a, it'll do a video for you and it'll actually put like some sort of heat thing so you can tell how <laughs> popular this right corner of your page was and this bottom Eight. left. Yeah. Yeah, heat maps. Heat maps work great. Um, Google does it. Um, and it's really wise to do A-B testing for your site. You know, you may have, you know, different pages that you want to test out. A lot of people offer that service as well. You can do it yourself. Google has an A-B tester. Um, it's Google Analyzer, I think. Right. Um, and you can try that out and, and see how that works as well. I love Google. Google's my favorite <laughs> Everything Google. Just use everything Google. You'll be fine. My best friend forever. Don't ever leave me. I know. Seriously, I don't know what I would do without Google. I and I think it's because they love my website, and you know I have to return the favor. Yeah, I know. It's like, what would we do without Google and without WordPress? Seriously, WordPress makes yeah. all of this so easy. It does. It really does. I I don't think um, I don't think I would be where I am without WordPress or Google. Seriously, I mean, a lot of my leads, a lot of my um, you know, a lot of my clients come through Google, and you know because I on the forum on my website I ask people where how have you found me, mm -hmm. and the majority I would say is through Google, and and they're very um, quality visitors and very quality leads. And that's what I like about that. You know, it's it's because they're using specific keywords to find you, and that's exactly what they're looking for. So it's great. Okay. And have you also done all the other Google stuff? Like you put your business on the map, and you've done all that stuff, and that's helping you. Yeah. It, I, you know, you can't tell where it comes from Google. Sometimes it'll say Google referral. Sometimes it'll say Google. Sometimes um, I don't do any pay per click through Google, um, and I don't advise. That you do pay per click unless you're just starting out, you have a little bit of budget, mm -hmm. and you want to test out keywords. That's another way, a good way to test out keywords actually is um, you have a little bit of budget to play with. You buy some sponsored ads in Google, and it will start telling you what's driving traffic to your website. So then you can take those keywords and actually optimize your site for those keywords. That that tactic works really well for a lot of people. Okay, usually I ask. At the end of the interview, I ask my guests to, to provide an assignment. But what I think I'd like you to do is to say, if someone's brand new and they want to see a noticeable traffic in six months, what are the top three or four or five or six tips that you want to say, I think you should do this and this and this because this is what I would do. Right. I learned all this down the road. Well, um, I would first know your audience, number one. Definitely know your audience. Um, number two, I would make a list of keywords and separate them out into um, a list of keywords for your products, a list or products and services, a list of uh, keywords for like general keywords like your name, the name of your company, the name of your products. Um, you know, if you have specific names that you want to target. Um, another list for competitors, so all your competitor names. And another list for uh, maybe for, you know, like a general list that you think you know, people will find you. And kind of put your mind in your customer's head. That's why you need to know your customers first. So if I was a customer, you know, my own customer, how would I search for my products and services? That's really important. And I don't think you can go beyond any other step if you don't have the step down um, because this is what's going to start you you know getting get you going on the internet um, and third once you have that is start producing a lot of content mm -hmm. and keyword rich content and start getting it out there you know as much as you can articles press releases videos podcasting videos and that's how you're going to generate the um, the fastest targeted traffic into your site and what percentage do you use um, your own content versus um, guest bloggers on your site? 
Um, I just started with guest bloggers. At the beginning, I do not recommend it because when you're first starting your business, you want to set yourself apart as an expert, okay? And you want people to read your own content, not somebody else's content. I just started as, um, get, you know, people actually, the idea came through somebody asking me to guest blog um, and said, you know, can I, have, can I post a guest blog on your site? And I said, you know what, why not? Sure. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was far enough in my business, my business, you know, I've had it for few years I think people know my content they know what I can write they know what I can provide so it would be okay to, to have guest bloggers but I would at least wait a year before okay. you do I don't recommend it for any, you know, anybody starting out but what I do recommend is for you to go out and guest blog on other people's sites like you did for me right <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you're first starting out you know that's also another great thing because that's getting you links more links back into your site and it's getting it's going to get you more traffic and that's why people like to guest blog because they get the link and they get the traffic so it's a win-win-win situation for everybody really it's a win for me it's a win for you and mm -hmm. everyone's happy readers right. are happy too <laughs> and then when how, when let's say um you guest blogged for me then mm -hmm. how would you use that content on your own site i'm just looking for you to give a tip to readers so that they, if they think i'm writing all this content for everyone else and i might be getting this link but can I use that on my site? What is your one tip for reusing that themselves? Because the, the Google juice is going first to the other site. Right. Um, I, I would rewrite the article. Okay. I would even put the same article up. Um, it could be the same theme. Okay. It could be you know, some, some of the same tips. But maybe on your own site, you want to elaborate a little bit more. You, maybe you want to add a couple extra tips with it, change the title. Um, so I would basically rewrite it. You don't have to rewrite 100% of it, but I would at least re rewrite half of it. Okay. And you know, reorder things, re you know, maybe add a couple tips, maybe make it, if, I, if you submitted a 600-word uh, article to me, maybe on your own site you might want to make it 800 words, you know, and just add a little bit to it. I think that will work just fine. Okay. Well, I think we talked about um, everything I want to talk about, but I had some specific questions because these are the things that people have asked me, and I'm like, well, I don't know. The jury's out because some people say this, some people say that. When you're doing your blog podcast feed, um, I've heard some people say, you know, put like blog dot, then your domain name dot com. Then other people say, no, it should be your domain name slash blog. So... And I've heard both, and I'm totally, you know what, I should, I should know this, but I'm totally confused at this point, Marina. I don't know which is better for SEO. I think it's the creatives marketing slash blog. That's what I think is, the, yeah. okay. Yes, it is. Um, you know, a lot, this is a lot of people starting out make the, this mistake. They, um, they start a blog outside of their website, and that is really the biggest mistake you can make. Because your goal is to bring traffic into your website, and that's the, and that's what the blog is going to get you. You don't want to be sending traffic. So if you're hosting your blog on WordPress versus on your own website, you're sending traffic to WordPress. You're not sending traffic to your site, and they're not going to be able to see you know what you offer, your services, your products, learn more about you. You know they can do a little bit on the blog, but then they want to be taken back to that site. And a lot of people, you know, think about people are lazy online. They, <laughs> they, don't, they don't want to be clicking everywhere. They don't have time. You want to make it as easy as possible for them. So you should be having your entire, um, you know, website hosted with your blog, you know, so on a blogging platform like WordPress.org versus WordPress.com. That's a very common mistake. And I regularly have to correct that with people. And they get frustrated because, you know, it's, it's a huge change. You know, you have to change re basically rebuild right. everything. So don't make that you know, don't make that mistake off the bat. That'll okay. really save you a lot of time and money. Okay. Uh, let's see, and the other one was um, RSS feed. Now someone in the beginning told me I should be doing a summary, but then I there's a there's a tool out there, it's like a blog checker or blog grader or something. And it gave me a very low score because it said we, you have no incoming links, you have no SEO, whatever, you have, you have no photos, you have no nothing. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? I have all of that. And it's because I had it on uh, summary instead of full. So, of course, I went to WordPress right away and changed it from summary to full. But then I also had to do something to my RSS feeder. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So 
I'm wondering how much Google juice did I lose or did I shoot myself in the foot for having it on summary for nine months instead yeah. of? Um, I keep it on summary. And, and, my, and the reason I say this is because the RSS should be a, a teaser. It's actually a little teaser for people to say, okay, I want to click through to that website, right? Um, because you're not going to be seeing traffic into your website. Well, that's if what I thought, yeah. When you actually put the full um, version of it, when people add add your site to their RSS, like Google Reader, for example, if they add your um, RSS to Google Reader, they're going to see the full um, story, and they're not going to be enticed to click over to your site. So I, I would definitely give them a little teaser. You want the traffic coming back to you and not keeping them there. And the same with social media. You never want to keep people on Facebook mm -hmm. or you never want to, be, to keep people on Twitter. You want them coming back into your site. And, and that's really key. So why did this, why did this um, blog grader give me, it's, it's supposed to be a very esteemed grader, gave me this incredibly low score because it said I had summary instead of full. I know I would not rely too much on tools. Um, tools, are great. <laughs> <laughs> tools, are, tools are really great, and I think tools can give you the general basic idea. Um, but I think with experience and testing different things out, you'll get to know that you know tools are wonderful to use, but they're not a hundred percent. You know because they're robots. I mean human brain or robots you know which one and and you want to you want to really rely on yourself and what you think is best for you instead of saying oh a tool told me this i have to do this but through experience i've seen that you know i don't want to be keeping people on my rss feed or on google reader i want them to come to me and that's wrong and i maybe there was a glitch with the tool or maybe i don't know but I, I really don't advise that at all okay well you know what this interview was worth a million bucks for me just on that tip alone because i'm like what? Yeah. 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 I'm sure. I'm sure ever, you know, a lot of people have that same question. So okay, good. Uh, and let's see, did I have another one? Um, something about, uh, well, I want to, okay. My first question is redirects. Now I don't know how to fix this Myrna because I don't know enough about SEO and that's why I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> it said something like every link that you get, um, needs to be coming in the same way and every way that you share your link needs to be the exact same way. So whether, you know, it could be www.creativesmarketing.com forward slash is different than creatives marketing without the forward slash. And this report again said to me, you are losing SEO juice because sometimes your site is, has the forward slash and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it has the HTTP and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm like, I don't know how to fix this. Captain, help me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not it's not easy to fix if other people are linking back to you in, in that way. Um, the only thing you can do if people are linking back to you is is ask them to correct it. Of course, that could be very time consuming. But on your own site, you want to be very very consistent. And I always recommend that you always have the www dot you know dot your name and then dot com and then forward slash forward always slash. Okay. and then yeah because if you have them in different versions on your website too that can be mistaken as as duplicate content as well right because even though they're the same page they're different links and even that they lead to the same page they're still considered different links so be very careful with that and I think it's really important out of everything you know beyond your content but on your on-page optimization of your site, it's really important to know how your website works. Um, it's it's important to get that education. You know how um, it's you know how it's really built. So you know what links are going to what, and and is it you know forward slash? Is it not? Is it just knowing that portion alone will really help you um, keep everything consistent, and and taking the time to learn that will actually save you a lot of time and a lot of headache in the future. Because I know some people put um, absolute links on their website, some people put relevant links, meaning. Um, if you know you're linking your pages are linking within each other some people will put the full URL www.mirnabar.com um, some people will put just forward slash and whatever that page is so you want to make sure you spell out the you know the entire URL when you're linking within your pages too so if you, just knowing that about your website can really save can save a lot of time okay and where would you suggest people go to learn about SEO? I mean, you can read it from a book, but Marina, reading a book a lot of times when you don't understand what the heck they're talking about, it's 
for me, visually, it's video is much easier for me. But what, what are your two tips maybe for places to go? Well, if you do have a little bit of budget, I think you should, you know, spend spend it on a couple of hours to really understand it and have somebody teach it to you. Of course, there's classes. I know UCI, um, because I teach at UC Irvine, um, they have classes now, search engine optimization classes. So if you don't have the budget for a consultant, maybe you'll have a budget for a class. And I would always, you know, I like these institutions because I know I can trust them. I mean, when they hire instructors, when they hire professors, they go through this whole, you know, hiring process. It's not somebody on the internet saying, oh, you know, I can make you millions of dollars and teach you SEO. You know, it's, it's somebody that really knows what they're doing that's going to teach it to you. I really suggest that. Um, as far as freebies, um, I know SEO Moz has mm. great content sometimes. So, and it's, they, they'll list things for you. I know Search Engine Land has great content about SEO. So maybe do some, uh, maybe go on Google and do some research on those types of websites that can get you very good, you know, very good information. And take the time, you know, you're not in a hurry. If you take at least a few months to learn it, you can at least, if you want to hire somebody, if you decide to outsource it, you know how to, what questions to ask them. And you know, okay, if they tell you something, you know whether to believe that or not because you, you have the heads up. You know, you know exactly what, what's going on. Okay. And uh, what percentage of your client time is teaching people SEO? Is that something that you would like to promote to these people listening right now? <laughs> Yes, I do. And actually, you know, in my business, I started out with SEO because at, the, at that time, social media wasn't huge for business. And then I knew that I had to combine the two in order, in order, you know, to continue with my business. But um, I, you know, SEO is probably the number one thing I recommend, you know, everybody do. So most of my time is spent on that. If I have people coming to me and telling me, you know, I, I want to be on social media and, you know, I want to do this you know they, they want to start out with Facebook they want to start out with Twitter I tell them okay have you let's look at your site have you optimized it have you you know do you have content do you and I, I kind of give them you know a few steps back I take them a few steps back mm -hmm. and I tell them social media is not your solution your your website is the solution you need to fix this so SEO really becomes you know comes first before before social media so real I spent most, most most of my time you know teaching people how to do that first and understanding that process and how it complements social media and how they go hand in hand. So you can't really do SEO without doing social media and, and vice versa now. That's really important. Okay. And then to close, um, I've noticed that um, you have been referred to as one of the smartest people in social media by bloggers. So how did you earn that title, Mirna? We all want that title. How did you get that? <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess when people start finding your content online and they love it um, and they start, they start spreading the word for you. And that's what's so great is that you're not only getting the links, you're not only getting the video visitors, you, you start to get fans and people start to love your information. They love your content and they're willing to spread that word for you. So they become evangelists. Mm -hmm. You know, they're your brand lovers, your brand evangelists that, you know, no matter what you do, they still love you. So it's, <laughs> those are, you know, those are the things that you want to, you know, because at first, when you're first starting, it's so much, it's a lot of overwhelm. You're trying to drive traffic, you're trying to create content, you're trying to measure. Mm -hmm. um, later on, um, you just have to put the content out there and people will spread the word for you. So I think that's what just what happened, you know, it just people started following me and the bloggers started to talk about you. And that's re that's really what happened with me. It was a very, very natural process. Cool. And that's the way you want it to be. Cool. Aren't you doing some sort of training or something in California soon? Like, didn't I see somewhere that you have like some training uh -huh. event or something? Uh -huh. I have speaking events all the time, and I also, you know, teach at UC Irvine. I teach there a few quarters a year. Um, I teach a social media strategy class. Okay, yeah. I teach a class for not-for-profits. Um, I just ended this quarter. I won't be starting again until June, um, but I'm going to be having a webinar soon in a few weeks, and I'm ready to announce it this up upcoming week, actually, and all the profits are going to be going to Japan, so I'm really oh. excited about that. Um, I think it will be a great webinar, and, and I really, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, is generate these webinars and donate the money to some great cause, and I think natural disaster is, 
you know, it's just devastating. Every time I read about it, it's like, oh, I, you know, it just it's it's really sad, very sad situation. So I really wanted something to help. Well, go ahead, promote your webinar. Tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the page is going to be up in a few weeks. Actually, uh, actually by next week it should be up. I'll probably um, do a little video to tell everybody to save the date. But um, I don't have the set date yet. It's going to okay. be end of April. Um, and we're looking at UCI to sponsor it as well. So UCI will be the sponsor of this webinar. And most likely, I'm going to give you a little hint, but most likely the topic will not be social media um, in its entirety. And I'm looking to focus more on keywords and how people need to get started with that. And I think that's the most important thing out there that people neglect. They really, that's not where people start and, and they don't know that that's where they need to start. So I think I'm going to go, it's more about going back to the basics. Mm -hmm. I want to take everybody back to the basics. And what I had done is I threw out a couple of questions online saying, what, what do you want to learn from a social media webinar? And so many people came back and said, you know what, we're doing social media, but we're still stuck. We want to go back to the basics. You know, how do we not get overwhelmed? How do we, you know, really get the, the results and the traffic? And so I, I think I have to start from step one with this webinar. I really do. Even though a lot of people are online, they still don't know. They're still struggling. Right. Well, that sounds great. I'm sure we'll all be there. <laughs> great. <laughs> well, Marina, it was a pleasure meeting you again. I follow you. I'm one of your biggest fans. I, I hate to say that because there was some movie. Where, there was some movie where this person said, I'm your biggest fan, and then that person killed that other person. <laughs> oh, no. That's not good. <laughs> uh, but in the nicest way possible, I, I just I get inspired every time I look at your website. I'm like, oh, I should be doing that, or look how well she did that, or whatever. So someday I hope to be you. Yeah. But um, it's... um. Just know that there are a lot of people watching you, and, and I'm sure you'll have a lot more fans um, after people watch this. Um, and you're just sort of like a roadmap to show us how to go. And I, and I her, really encourage everyone to, to go to Marina's webinar then, because that is so true. Me having been in business for a year, um, I can see the mistakes that I made early on that I wish you know I'd had you in my back pocket. And maybe you and I will talk after this, because there are things that I do very, very well, and there are still some holes when it comes to SEO. And frankly, SEO has just been one of those things I'm like, oh, it'll work itself out. <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it, Marina? Tell us all. We have to. We have to plan it. We have to make it happen. And so you do have to plan it. You need a strategy. You know, everything Everything needs to be planned online because without that strategy, you're just going to be trying different tactics mm -hmm. to see what sticks. And sometimes it may stick, sometimes it may. Some people get lucky online. But without a strategy to really keep you going and to have it to be sustainable and scalable to where you continuously adding on to it, yeah. take the time to plan. That is so essential. And, you know, I'm always preaching that to people, and I feel like I preach it too much. But I really feel that that's needed. You know, it really is. And, and every time I tell people to put a strategy in place, they neglect it. You know, even some of my clients, you know, I come back and say, okay, what have you done? And like, oh, we went on Facebook. I'm like, but that's not what I told you. I said, put a strategy in place. So they just neglect it. And I think that's where you're going to succeed when you have that in place. And going back to search engine optimization, honestly, it's um, not rocket science. <laughs> Fairly simple. And I get, look, I'm not a techie. If people tell me, no, Mary, you're a techie. You know, understand this stuff. My background is business. I don't have communications in business. I don't know the computer lingo. I, I had to learn just like everybody else did. I had to struggle just like everybody else has struggled. And um, it, it really, it's not rocket science. Once you get it, you get it. And, and it's, it gets you great, great results. So... Great, and uh, I can't think of a better way to end this interview than on that high note. Hope for all of us to rock our businesses. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Myrna. And again, Thank her you. website, everyone, please go visit it. I love her. It's MyrnaBard.com. And uh, yes. visit her Facebook page, too. So thank you guys for visiting. Bye. Remember, Bye. every step you make moves your business forward. It's all step by step by step, as you've heard Myrna say today. So. Put the plan in place. Go to Myrna for SEO help. Come to me for social media help. Go to Myrna for social media help. Just make sure you are not trying to do it all on your own. Outsource and you will get there so much faster. So that's it. Thanks for visiting. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sherry. Bye.